Hello and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be looking at this battery pack. So this battery pack um, powers a... sorry let me just turn off the dehumidifier for a second. There we go. So that battery pack actually powers a, um, a works lawnmower. Uh, I think the lawnmower itself dates from around 2012. And basically it's now at a point where I've had it in storage for a number of years. The mower hasn't actually been used that much. Uh, it is a mower that I bought um, second hand. And I'll be honest, shortly after I actually purchased it, we um, got rid of all the grass in the garden. So since we've moved, we've now actually got a garden which does have quite a bit of grass. And um, I now seem to have a small collection of lawn mowers. I've got the the works lawnmower. I've also got a fly mower which I purchased uh, a couple of months back mainly just to do the garden and I might have a nice petrol mower coming as well that needs restoration but that's purely for uh, my own interest rather than actually mowing the lawn. This one though is quite handy because it's battery powered. You just charge up the battery, chuck it into the mower and away you go. Now the battery on this one is actually telling us that it apparently has two out of three bars left. However, when you charge it, uh, the battery pack itself gets very hot, and when you put it into the mower, even if it's showing three bars or three LEDs, it powers the mower for about five minutes and then fails. So I think the battery pack itself has seen better days. Now, what a lot of people would probably do is just dispose of the mower, the battery pack, and get a new one, because these are quite expensive new. So, let's actually have a look inside it and see if there is anything that we can do. And... To get into it, it doesn't actually seem to be too complicated. You have... One, two, three, and four. So you've got four points of that, four screws to get into it. So I'll rest it on its side. And we will start off with this one. Storage of the battery is also important for long life. I stored it in one of my old sheds. And the old shed was one of those um, plastic Keta sheds. Now, they're very good for durability. Uh, they last a very long time. And they do have quite good storage capacity. So I've just noticed there's more batteries. There's a total of eight. Sorry, screws rather. There's a total of eight. You've got two of these either end. So the shed itself is very good for long-term storage of items but because it's plastic it does seem to attract quite a lot of condensation and even though i had the battery stored in the shed uh in a bag because there was that sort of uh cycling of temperatures from sort of two extremes uh because the shed would either get very hot in the summer or very cold and damp in the winter um, what actually happened is I think it has done the battery some damage. So it is a good idea when you do have lead acid batteries that you are placing into storage that you make sure you place them in an environment that's dry, not too hot and not too cold. So the garage I'm stood in at the moment is probably at around 15 degrees or so, but there is a dehumidifier that runs and also a heater that runs as well. Uh, heater runs overnight. Dehumidifier runs pretty much all the time. Um, just to keep things at a nice sort of moisture level. So there's no sort of condensation. Uh, no moisture that sort of turns to condensation. Which is... Or no humidity that turns to condensation. Which is quite important. Um, because I store the jag in here, I want to make sure that it is uh, dry, but not too dry. Because if you have a garage that is too um, too 
too dry, too dehumidified, and you've got a car in there, you can actually start to damage uh, rubbers, such as fuel tank rubbers and all of that sort of good stuff. Anyway, that appears to be the unit broken into. So, it's actually, uh, thankfully, two small lead-acid cells. Uh, judged by the fact this is 24 volts, I'm guessing that these are two 24 volt, sorry, two 12 volt cells. Uh, we have a nice fat, what looks like, um, I think that's a diode pack. Uh, yes, it, yeah, it would be a diode pack because you don't want anything going from, back from positive to negative or negative to positive. We have a couple of battery clips here. So those are there, and then you've got the actual connectors there, which go to the connector that goes to the um, uh, the mower itself. On the top here, you have an LED panel. So there is a little chip on there. That chip is a ST. Uh, that's the manufacturer. Sorry. EZ4N841. So I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if that is a voltage regulator or not. Um, I will put up a uh, schematic of that chip if I can find one. So, what I have purchased off of eBay for around £24 actually, so it's relatively cheap for two of these is a couple of 12 volt cells and these there we go these actually match the specification of the cells which are used in this um, in this battery pack so excuse the noise in the background awful lot of polystyrene and cardboard there we go so these are 5.4 amp hours and this is 5 amp hour rated so they actually fall into the recommended amp hour ridge which is handy so what we need to do is we're going to have to do a bit of unsoldering we've also got um, some double-sided foam stuff here which obviously protects the battery stops it moving etc so we'll need to get some of that onto these new ones as you can see there's some there which actually holds down uh, the chunkier wiring you can see it's actually quite a thicker gauge going down to the external connector because obviously you're going to be drawing more current than when you're actually charging the battery so the actual charge cables uh, which are these little ones here, so this one and this one, they, from this charging point here, trickle charge the battery. Because it's not drawing a huge amount of current, it's just trickling charge into the battery, you don't actually need really thick cable. But because you are going to be drawing quite a bit when you're using the mower, you do need to have these good thick gauge uh, cables. So what we're going to do is we're going to sweat off the solder joints or unsolder it. And once we've done that, we can actually start thinking about getting these new batteries into here. So I'll just pause the video, get the soldering iron warmed up and we'll get started. So it's taken a little while for the soldering iron to get warm. So we're going to start off by just applying it there and sucking away as we go. There we go, that's one off. Now we need to do this one on the negative terminal. There we go. And the battery pack itself, what we'll actually do is we can actually remove this charge uh, connector 
oh sorry, supply connector. So there's a screw just holding it in place. So we can actually get everything out of the way completely. There we go. That's those out of the way. Only go back in one way, so positive to the left, get those out of the way. And that leaves us with the battery pack itself. So move the top out of the way. And what I should be able to do is literally just upend it. And away you go. There's your battery packs removed. So you can see they're actually stuck together as well for additional uh, additional rigidity. What I will do off camera is I'll get some adhesive padding in between these two cells and then we'll put it all back into the unit. There we go. There's the new cells in the machine. Oh, sorry, in the pack rather. So what I'll do is solder on the diode unit. Now if I remember rightly, the diode unit was that way round. What I'll do to be safe is actually just check back through my video. This is why you always want to take photographs of stuff before you take it out. So I'll just do that quickly and I'll get this soldered on. There we go, so we've got the correct orientation. And we're going to be going on to here and here. So as you can see, my methods for keeping it in place while soldering. Not exactly groundbreaking. I think one of the problems is for this type of work, I might actually need a hotter soldering iron. So something with a bit higher wattage. Because this um, solder that's used originally seems to be much higher temperature than the stuff I'm currently putting on. So that might be something to bear in mind um, when you do this yourself. And if I... that remove hold and set there we go so that's that side sorted out now we need to turn our attention to this side which is going to be our supply and charging points add more solder and done that's literally all that needs. Now what I'll do, I'll actually do the large chunky cable, and then the charge cable can just go on top. So I'll do the chunky cable first. So I'll just plop that onto there. And we'll go straight in, like so. Get that lathered with solder. And I think that's actually held on, so... I'll, ah, no it hasn't, but... There we go, let's try that again. There we go. That should do it. There we go. Good connection on there. What I'll do just to neaten it up is finish off up this end so we don't have any exposed wires. So we'll just get those covered in a nice blobs of solder as well. Ah, that's so annoying, but expected. Ow. 
it's actually super hot. Anyway, there we go. Now for the little charge cable. That's going to literally just piggyback on top of there. And what I'll do for that one is put this into this sort of vertical position like so. Bring that over and literally do initially just do this to so mash it into place. More solder. Let go, let go, let go of the soldering iron. Gone. And set. Done. There we go. All done. So now we just need to reassemble and then we'll hook it up to the charger and we will see if it actually charges. So we've got the battery pack back. It's currently showing three bars. So let's plug in the charger. And the charger is currently on. And let's see what it does. So the charger, when the battery's discharged, it shows red. When the battery's obviously charged, it shows green. So it's showing three uh, full things at the moment, but that's not necessarily to say that the battery is fully charged. It may need a little bit more juice to get it going. So we'll move that to one side and we'll leave that to charge. In the next episode we're going to take a look at the mower itself and we're going to see if there is anything that we can do to basically improve its grass cutting capabilities and also give it a general sort of very basic uh, clean up as well. And look at that, it is actually fully charged already so that battery was in good shape, the charger has clicked off and we now have a fully charged battery. That really didn't take long at all. Uh, it's not surprising because obviously the batteries have come pre-charged, which is good. So what I'll do actually, before I get the mower in, I'll give it a quick go and see if it actually powers the mower. It's a bit wet to cut the grass, but I can certainly get it out and just make sure that, uh, well, the mower actually works. Anyway, if you found this episode interesting and useful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to also subscribe. It's much appreciated if you do. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you soon.